Tonight's film, Rope, is a famous thriller by the director of so many famous thrillers, Alfred Hitchcock. In seven years, this is the first Hitchcock film we've shown on Movie Drome, and there's a reason for that. While Movie Drome, in theory, is a selection of cult and weirdo type movies, Hitchcock is the epitome of the commercial director. His films were designed to be seen by the largest of mass audiences in the United States, Europe, and all over the world. Of all Hitchcock films, perhaps only Psycho and the Birds, odd, uncharacteristic movies made late in his career, could be described as cult movies. Why then are we showing Rope? Because, in addition to being a celebrated thriller, Rope is also famous as a cinematic experiment, an attempt to give the illusion that the film was made in one continuous shot. I've always wished for more artistic talent. Well, murder can be an art too. The power to kill can be just as satisfying as the power to create. In fact, the fame of Rope is slightly exaggerated. There are at least two exchanges of close-ups at crucial moments in the film and an opening exterior. But the rest of the film is played as if it were one continuous shot, uninterrupted by close-ups, medium shots or masters. At the time, the average film had anything up to 600 separate cuts in it. Today, with the fast editing popularized by television programs and MTV videos, the cuts can number in the thousands. And there's nothing inherently wrong in that. A film can exist any way the filmmaker wants it to. And some filmmakers, as diverse as Bruce Connor and Nicholas Rogue, have produced fascinating films whose excellence was in the editing. At the same time, editing strategies, especially the modern exchanges of televisual close-ups, can become predictable. The long take, if done well, cannot. Remember the extraordinary opening shot of Touch of Evil, would that sequence be remembered today if it had been accomplished by 30 shots instead of one? In Rope, Hitchcock goes one better than any other exponent of the long take, fashioning a film which appears to be one continuous sequence. Obviously it can't be. A roll of 35 millimeter film is at the maximum 1,000 feet long, approximately 10 minutes. Hence, every 10 minutes, Hitchcock and his cameraman, Joseph Valentine, were forced to find a solution the problem of the reel change. And they often joined reels by having a character walk past the camera, momentarily blacking out the frame. If Rope, the story of two dispassionate young killers based on the Leopold and Loeb murder case, resembles theatre, it's not surprising. It's based on a play by the British novelist and playwright Patrick Hamilton. His work has recently been rediscovered. Rope was revived this year in London. The entire film was shot on a soundstage, in a set specially constructed with flying walls and furniture which moved on especially greased rollers. A special dolly was invented by the key grip Morris Rosen to allow the bulky studio camera greater freedom of movement. As many as five microphone boom operators were working simultaneously to record live sound. To complicate matters still further, it was Hitchcock's first color film and they had great problems creating the right effect of evening light towards the end of the film. When cameraman Valentine left the picture due to illness, Hitchcock reshot the final five reels. In spite of its theatrical origins, Rope is far from stagey. Able to act out entire sequences, sometimes 10 minutes in length, the actors are able to deliver performances as opposed to snippets. James Stewart as the suspicious professor and John Dahl and Farley Granger as the killers are outstanding. Take it easy, Philip. Rupert's onto something. He isn't. No, let up. Got to have a drink, Brandon. Take enough. You're not Take your hand off my arm. Don't you ever again tell me what to do and what not to do. I don't like it, Brandon, and I'm All not right, going to take it. voice now. I, uh... I hope I didn't upset Philip. You never let him uh, No, no, he's more likely mixing his drinks. You seem rather upset yourself. Do I? Special praise is due the model making section of the art department, who produced a giant perspective model of the New York skyline outside the apartment windows. Including replicas of the Empire State and Chrysler Building, the skyline contained 6,000 flashing lights, 200 miniature neon signs, 26,000 feet of wire, and was operated by 47 different switches. The said model also included cloud formations made from spun glass and chicken wire, 
under the direction of the uh, famous meteorologist, Dr. Dinsmore Alter. Rehearsals for Rope took 10 days. Filming began on January 22, 1948, and ended on February 21st, four weeks later. Because it was based on an actual event, Rope was a cause of anxiety in certain parts of the United States. It was banned in Chicago, where the crime occurred, and also in Spokane, Memphis, and Seattle.